Hi, Dane. Let me first start off by saying this. I hope you're soaking up that AC back at the station because it is a hot one out here. But that's not stopping the city of Allentown from having some fun. They said 95 degrees or not, they're just happy to be together and having a good time. Blues, brews, and barbecues. This is blues, brews, and barbecue. They said it. It's the city of Allentown's 14th annual blues, brews, and barbecue. It's so nice to see that we have the support in downtown Allentown. It's a great time. Families and friends came out to Hamilton Street Saturday to enjoy good food, music, and local vendors, even if the temperatures were, well, hot. It's very hot. Nice weather, even though hot. It's hot, but it feels great to be here. Fortunately, the city was prepared. The Allentown Fire Department set up a cooling station for people of all ages to enjoy. For a hot summer day, it's a great idea. I'm glad we're able to be here. Everyone agreed that having a summer event like this right in the heart of the city for everyone to enjoy was a good move. But I'm really impressed with how, you know, much downtown has been improved. It's wonderful. It's good to be back. Images row homes in Shenandoah, Schuylkill County. It broke out early this evening in the 300 block of West Oak Street. Oh, I knew exactly what happened. The front porch of John Horner's home has been reduced to rubble after he says this pickup truck slammed into it around 430 in the morning. Horner tells us he was asleep inside his home along Route 222 and Maxitani Township as it all unfolded. The whole porch has got to be replaced. And you can see just all the damage here on the porch, debris everywhere. The homeowner tells us this is the eighth time his home has been struck in his 20 years living here. Do you know that sound? And then you just wait for the state police and the fire trucks and ambulance. The sanctuary at Hoffsville in Brininsville is inundated. So we got a call about a truck that had broken down and they had 74 dogs on board. And all 74 <coughs> are now here. He says murders simply didn't happen in the quiet town. And this one had everyone talking. And you're trying to figure who could possibly be. There was all kinds of rumors going around. Chivarella was last seen right here, walking down Church Street in Hazleton. It was a route she took every day to school, but Marchetti says, tragically, that day was different. James Paul Fort, a face and a name to identify the man police say murdered nine-year-old Maurice Chivarella in 1964. Several officers became emotional, revealing the news. It's a vivid memory for everybody who lived through this. And it's a, a vivid memory for everybody who grew up in this area. For people who did grow up in Hazleton, they might recognize this face. Police say Fort graduated from Hazleton High School. He was a bartender in town and lived on West 14th Street. And years after Chivarella's murder, he was arrested for assaulting a woman in 1974. He actually pled guilty to aggravated assault and got a year probation. But state police say Fort will never stand trial for his alleged crimes because he died in 1980 and was buried here at Calvary Cemetery in Butler Township. You can even see where the ground was recently disturbed at his burial site when state police exhumed his body to confirm that it matched their DNA profile. I could never even think of having such a nightmare. I can never even think of dreaming such a nightmare. Father Gendrus asked us not to show his uncle's face or use his name for fear that he could become a target of the Russian military if he was seen on Western media. Despite the rain, dozens lined the sidewalk in front of the Hatboro Police Department greeting the motorcycles and Officer Ryan Allen's ambulance with salutes and American flags. This gloomy morning isn't going to stop these people. And every officer we have and every full-time and part-timer is here. The letters fill the woman's entire kitchen table. All of them showed up in her mailbox Tuesday, each one with a different name. Ten people out there don't know their information is being used to acquire unemployment. The woman did not want to be identified, but according to the Pennsylvania Labor Department website, she's right to be concerned. It says, quote, signs of fraud include receiving unrequested unemployment paperwork. This is our home for 18 years. None of those people have ever lived here. The woman called Allentown Police, who referred her to the Department of Labor. She called their fraud hotline, but was on hold so long she hung up. 
how many fraud cases do you possibly have going on that I'm on hold for 45 minutes waiting to speak to somebody? We called that hotline as well. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Unemployment Compensation Service Center. And we waited and waited and waited until finally, after an hour and a half, we hung up as well. The woman says she turned to Facebook to see if anyone else was dealing with this and found out she's not alone. There were a bunch of people that were receiving the same letters. Some of them had thrown them away. Some of them, I guess, were returning to sender. And the woman says that's her plan as well. I wrote in all capitals, fraud uh, person does not live at this address, return to sender. So since the woman says she can't get through on the unemployment line, she's going to drop them in a post office box like this one because she says she doesn't want to put them in her own mailbox. I'm not going to stick it in my mailbox because I feel like somebody's watching my mailbox. And the woman says she hopes that's the end of it. In Allentown, Rob Manch, 69 News. That's how you win a football game. That was a tough football game. You guys did it. You broke the streak. The streak is dead. Woo!